Groovy. Welcome to Horror After Midnight. I am your host, KC, joined tonight by Saw Guy. How's it going, man? Doing pretty good, man. How about you? I see you brought on a special guest. Oh, yeah, you had to, man. We had to bring on Annabelle because uh, we're here to talk about Annabelle creation. So <laughs> kind of had to do it. Oh, man. Didn't anybody tell you don't open that fucking glass case? <laughs> yeah, 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 she's a bit creepy. Oh, shit, man. I, I tell you what, if she starts winking at me, we're going to have some issues here. <laughs> Damn. Like dude. Uh, oh, oh, shit. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know about Saw Guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what are we talking about today? Uh, Annabelle Creation. Oh, shit, man. This, this is a scary one, man. Out of all the Annabelles, I think this is the one that still haunts my soul. Um, shit, I gotta sit up, man, because I can tell you right now, my back is tingling thinking of that one scene. Your soul. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, what's cool about Annabelle, they released it back in 2017. Um, it was released on August 11th. Um, I know that day very well because of August 11th is kind of like a bad luck day for me. I'm superstitious. I'm one of those weird ones. But oh, okay. um, what's pretty cool is that they made a fortune off of this, man. Had a budget of $15 million, and the box office took in $306 million. And it's like, holy, holy shit. shit. Yeah. Um, off of, you know, the, the second Annabelle, actually, you know, because this is number two that they released. But in the chronological order, this is the first one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right after The Nun. And I'd say this one, to me, was... Like, I really, really enjoyed The Nun, but this mm-hmm. one was, like, on a whole nother level of, like, awesomeness. Yeah. I kid you not, dude. Like, when I first saw the first Annabelle that came out, I thought that was a little bit slow, a little bit methodical kind of thing. This one just gets right into it, man. I mean, you find out the whole reason about Annabelle and the possession and all that stuff, and it's just like, holy shit. And it's really fucking dark. Yeah, yeah, it is, because, like, especially, like, right there near the beginning when um the dad's, like, sitting there trying to fix the tire or whatever, and, like, one of the um one of the nuts off the uh, tire shoots out on the road, and the daughter goes to run out and gets and gets fucking whacked by the damn truck or whatever it was. Oh. I was like, what the fuck? Dude. <laughs> I was man. not expecting that at all. <laughs> that that scene right there reminded me of freaking the, the original Pet Cemetery where the kid's playing with the kite and he runs in the middle and the truck hits him. I was like, oh, no, please don't happen. Please don't happen. Like... <laughs> I'm watching it, and I'm just like, oh, fuck, the kid got killed. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, uh, dude. Before we get too far, um, first impressions? Um, My first impression on it was scary as fuck. Um, and I say that because I saw this movie in theaters, and I never got to watch it again until we had to do this episode because it scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for sure, I give it a five out of five, man, because it, it has that creep factor. It's scary. Um, this is one of those random ones out of the series that you could put in just out of order and enjoy the shit out of it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree there. Mm-hmm. What'd yeah, you think? This one, like I was saying earlier, like, um, way better than The Nun. Um, I, like I said, I really enjoy The Nun, but this one, a lot more intense. Like, this, the jump scares were great. Acting was great. Um, what was it, the one girl that ends up getting possessed or whatever was creepy as hell with like the same co- like color eyes, just like the nun had. Um, all kinds of different stuff that it was all awesome in the whole movie. All the different um demons that are like attached or not really attached, but like attracted to Annabelle. Yeah, all of them creepy as fuck. all around an awesome movie. Oh, hell yeah. You know, and the thing that I really loved about it is that you could tell that James Wan's handprints was all over on it because the demons look very similar to the demon that you saw in the first Annabelle movie, the one that takes place after this one. And what's cool is that you see the same style of demon from Insidious in this film. And what I mean by same style, like they're like dark skin. They look like they're charred. Um, they, they really went mythical with this almost, and it, it just really kind of plays with your mind because, you know, uh, if you're, if you kind of like follow religion or anything like that, you see depictions like in the Bible and random stuff like that. But, um, when you actually see it in person, like someone in full gear makeup and they're acting it out, it's like, holy shit, they brought it to life. Like, <laughs> and you would only expect it. And I think that's what scared the shit out of me with it, you know, um, with the little girl's soul possession. 
Um, and then the way how they're like, don't go in this room, you know? And, uh, you know, when they tell you that it's shit as a kid, I mean, do you think kids listen? No. No. <laughs> they, they, like, they what's they in that room? I need to go check it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and the whole time that I was watching that, I was like, why are you going to go in that fucking room? Like, you can feel it. And that's what's so cool about this film uh, as, like, one of the best ones out of the whole franchise that you could put in and enjoy because it really brings in that tension. Like, when you're watching the movie, it doesn't matter what you're doing or whatever. You can put it on and there's a background or whatever. But when you start hearing that tension, you hear that, Ooh, and it's, like, getting closer. Um, it hooks you in. You can feel that tension. Uh, and that always scared the shit out of me, man. Like, even now, like, I'll, I'll see it pop on TV every now and then on HBO. And when I watch it, I'm like, oh, hell no, I know this scene. I'm going to mute it down because I know <laughs> something's going to come out, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speaking of that, like, the other night, um, wasn't even planning on watching it. I get home and it's on, like, on the cable. It was the Anthony Creation plan. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, think that, I think that was the same thing we were, I was watching the other night, too, because I, I saw it come on and I go, holy shit, what are the odds? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah there was that one scene with the uh the girl like she first opens up as like a closet or something annabelle's in sitting in and she like closes it the door just opens right back up and she tries locking it even that won't work but, yeah oh. definitely something going on with this doll yeah oh man dude and you know what's so crazy um i love the little aspects the little touches that they did to kind of show you this and it, it goes what i was saying on our last review is that you can't have a sequel without the prequel. And with this prequel, it showed that Annabelle was like a clean-looking doll. It didn't have all the rough edges. It didn't been around the block, that kind of thing. Um, but then later on, you start seeing like the little tears and the and the cracks in, in the actual Annabelle doll. And holy shit, I think she just winked at me. <laughs> I'm all, sorry, I, I lost my train of thought. I saw Annabelle and the eyes just moved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, but you know it, it's really cool with how they show that deterioration with it, man. Um, it goes to show that James Wan knows how to tell a story. I mean, he didn't direct it or anything; he produced it. They had the okay. director uh, Gary Dubman. He uh, or no, he was a writer, and then it was directed by David F. Sandberg. Um, they've done other horror films, and they've worked under with James Wan. But James Wan was kind of giving them their, like, fair shot at it. Um, yeah. But they did this really good, man. I mean, even down to the music. Um, the music, he normally has, what's his name? Bashira. And he's the guy who did uh, the Insidious music. And, oh, okay, Insidious, they had some really good music, too. Yeah, you know, and he normally uses that guy for, like, a lot of the Conjuring series. And he uses Charlie Closer for, like, Saw and Dead Silence and stuff. But um, for this film, they went with a different composer... And he still did really good. I couldn't tell the difference. I honestly thought it was Bashira that did this. And when I looked it up, you know, even before this episode, I was just like, holy shit, it wasn't Bashira. Like, man, they, they took a lot of thought in making this. But I think with this one, they learned from their faults from the first Annabelle film to this one. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Because, like, the first Annabelle, I don't want to talk too much about it, but... It was much uh, slower, nor near as intense as this film. This one's like a, like on a whole nother level of like just like bam, bam, like in your face, like yeah, thing after another. And and that's where it just it didn't even let you get a chance to breathe, man. I like, and that's what I loved about this one. I think they learned from their faults from the first one as a spinoff, and they said, okay, we know what everyone's expecting. We heard everyone's, you know good and bad on it. Let's try and make this a better story. And holy shit, they, they knocked it out of the park with this one, man. Because like you said, it's just bam, 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 bam. Um, it doesn't let you sit and like breathe in because by the time you actually see a scene and it scares the shit out of you, you're like, okay. Then all of a sudden that scene, you're like, whoa, what the fuck is that? You know? <laughs> uh, that's yeah, how I am yeah, every exactly, time when like, I see this. Yeah, there was one scene that, uh, that you made me think of where um, it was like another holy shit moment. It's like a uh, the guy that's like owns the house or whatever that all the girls are at, he's holding this cross because he sees this girl is possessed and her like she's like just got like lifted up in the air and her like you can't see it but like you can like hear her neck snap and then all of a sudden all his fingers oh. get start getting like pulled back one by one snapping backwards. I was like holy shit man. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's just it's the little details with that. And and the way that I think they did it, they did more. I don't know if they filmed it in surround with the sound or they added it in or piped it in or whatever. But the way yeah. that they did it was just phenomenal, man, because it just it scared the shit out of me. And out of there isn't too many horror films that really scare me. Um, but I would say the first Insidious is up there. Um, and I would go as far as say Annabelle Creations up there with it, just because it had that creep factor of the original Insidious. And it had all the mojo that I think that really propelled the whole Conjuring series. Okay, yeah. I can see that because Insidious was similar when, like, in Into the Further, you have so many different demons and all kinds of spirits, which is very similar to the Annabelle. And she draws in all the spirits. And it's not like in another realm or whatever, but very similar in that, that type of uh, aspect. Yeah. And it, it's crazy, man. That That's like, like I said with this one, this is, if you have to watch any of the spinoffs or anything like that, whether it be the nun, Annabelle, or any of the, you know, oddball conjurings, like Annabelle comes home or anything. I always tell everybody start with Annabelle creation. And the reason why you start with this one, this one gets straight to the meat and potatoes. Um, this is something that you can put on with everybody watching and, uh, it scared the shit out of everybody, <laughs> you know? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah. would. Yeah. But I know um, definitely um, definitely up there out of all the out of all of them and doing them the way we're doing them now it's like compared to like I said, I said a couple times but compared to none definitely way better um, yeah can't wait to get on to the next ones because I mean we got this whole series to do but um definitely a great movie um I was watching it with my girl and she was just going nuts screaming left and right just like it was <laughs> great was she doing the thing where she's putting her hands right here behind her face. No, she was just be more like, what the fuck is that? What's going on? Like, <laughs> Was Annabelle right there watching you guys as you watched the movie? <laughs> uh, right behind us, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, I, I can see that creep factor with it, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy, man. You know, what's cool about, uh, I know you brought it up, it is the acting. And that's one thing that I think they really, like, all the other films, are, they're really good on acting. They'll get some big-name actors like they did in The Nun and stuff like that. But I think with Annabelle Creation, they kind of took a risk of, you know, getting a lot of, you know, actors that are not well-known. They've done some stuff, mostly TV. But the acting was really, like, super good, man. Like, I was impressed with it because of the fact that there, there's not really a name that stands out. So, I mean, if you were to see this movie in theater, you're like, okay, Annabelle Creation, who's in it? And you couldn't name one actor. I mean, <laughs> I can tell you right now, when I went to go see it, I didn't know any of the actors. You know, I thought, okay, maybe you're going to see the the Warrens come in or whatever like that in this story. But, um, you know, for the most part, it was all just, like, not well-known actors. But they were freaking amazing. And I was like, holy shit. You yeah, know? yeah, they were really good, especially for being, like, a lot of them being uh, child actors or, you know, young teens and uh, child actors. Yeah. They all were great, too. Yeah, absolutely, man. And I, I was rooting for a lot of them. I was like, please, don't have Annabelle kill him. Don't have Annabelle kill him. I want to see him later on in the sequels. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we'll find out later on when we start reviewing uh, the in chronological order with Annabelle. Yeah, yeah, Annabelle will be coming next after this one. Um, this one being like more the origin story. And then uh, the follow-up, basically, the way it goes in the storyline will be Annabelle. Yep. Hell yeah. I'm I'm anxious, man. Let's let's go watch Annabelle right now. Let's go. Cause I'm I'm hyped <laughs> up right now, dude. After I saw creation, I'm like, okay, we got the scary shit out of the way, but let's see the other good stuff. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely do that. Um I guess any closing statements? Um check out Annabelle 2, and if you watch it, have all the fucking lights on, make sure you're holding your cross, do your blessings, do whatever you need to do, because this movie's gonna scare the fuck out of you if you've never seen it. <laughs> and put That's all your awesome. dolls away. Put all your yeah. dolls away. Yeah, they will probably bother you a little bit after watching this movie. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, for this one, um, can't believe to say this, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. It's, like, almost a perfect film, uh, very extreme with uh like all the jump scares and like i said the acting is amazing if you haven't seen it definitely go check it out and we'll be back next time with uh annabelle hell yeah throw that up man get annabelle to throw it up 
Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's my wife. See you guys next time. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude.